Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. So it is a beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, as you can see behind me, I have one of our skid loaders here. We're over at the Freedom Compound, uh, getting a jump on this first thing in the morning because it's gonna be an exciting day. Um, sorry, I'm really excited. It's, don't know where to even begin. Um, starting to clear out the area back, back way over there. Uh, for our house, um, Rachel and I got issued our septic permit uh, this past week. We're filing our building permit here at the beginning of the week, so hopefully we should be breaking ground here like in the next week or so, depending on how quickly uh, the township municipal building wants to wants to move on getting us our building permit. So I have the skid loader. I have to clear out a bunch of brush way back there. Um, and then I'm actually unloading this and then I'm doubling back to my house to get the quad and the mower uh, because after I have the brush cleared there's a couple trees I, I need to drop um, once I get all that taken care of I want to mow the grass down really well so that Rachel and I can get some stakes and uh, paint lines on the ground um, the last thing I need before I actually submit my building permit is an estimated distance from the road to the closest corner of the house for our site map um, you know, depending on your township, there are certain ordinances you have to be uh, a certain distance away from the street. Now we fall well within, you know, well outside of those those uh, guidelines there, but they still need to see them on the site map so that they can approve it and get us our building permit. So that is the plan for today. So I'm going to get the skid loader unloaded and get going. Okay, now we got a nice big ring around this brush pile. I'm gonna go ahead and light this on fire. <laughs> I'll admit it, that kinda made my heart jump a little bit. <laughs> now I put a bunch of diesel fuel on it. Don't worry, Dad, I bought it. Um, and then I use just a little bit of gas to kind of make myself a trail to light it. I think I might have went a little heavier than I thought I did on the gasoline. But either way, that's going now so I can jump up and start clearing the brush. This is nice and close, so I'll be able to keep an eye on it to make sure, you know, it doesn't start spreading and getting out of control. I can start containing it, pushing it all together as it burns down. And all the brush and everything I pull out of here, I can just throw it right on there. So we're good to go now. So this is the area that I need to clear out. Uh, this is where I think our garage uh, side of the house is going to be. Um, you know, we're on a pretty decent slope here. So ideally, we'd like to have a walkout basement, uh, which means our garage is going to be up here. So after I get this cleared, you know, I know we're going to have to bring in some fill, but, you know, we'll worry about that later. So right now, I'm going to start clearing this. Uh, I need to drop that tree. I'll have to move our picnic table and grill. Thank you, Tom and Chrissy. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get the camera set up and start clearing that. And don't worry, I'm gonna try to be as careful as possible and not scratch our nice skid loader.
So even though I was trying, I was spinning, clipped the tree and broke uh, broke the tooth off. So uh, the bucket looks fine. I just sheared the bolts. So sorry, dad, I'll buy some new bolts and get this put back on for you. Okay, so I got a good section of this brush cleared out. Um, now I know no matter what, I'm gonna need this stuff gone too. Uh, just the way our driveway is gonna end up coming up to our garage. Um, but I would like to have Rachel here as well so that I can, she can help me lay out the, you know, the base footprint of our house or at least get a rough idea so I know how much further to go back. Um, I need to drop this tree, and I actually didn't realize that there was a tree down back here. It was covered in so much brush. So I have to drop this one, and I have to cut this one up. Uh, the brush pile's going pretty decent. Um, you know, not as fast as I would have hoped, but, you know, it's at least progress. So I got that burning there. I got a pile here and now I have a pile of brush here. So ideally if I can get all of these piles of brush burnt today, that would be really cool. If not, I guess we'll just have to have a bonfire over here one night and take care of them. So for now, I'm gonna just take a minute and uh, pull up the layout, see if I have spray paint, get the chainsaw over here and uh, get set up for the next, next step.
boy do I love having a skid loader at my disposal. Now, any lumberjacks or anybody that cuts trees professionally, don't make fun of me, please. Um, something about dropping trees just always makes me nervous. Um, I don't know if it's just I don't want to, you know, ruin my dad's chainsaw or what, but I don't know, something about it just makes me makes me a little on edge. You know, I have a nice big area here. There's nothing over there that could potentially get damaged. But, you know, I, I got a nice wedge cut in it, and then I wasn't really paying attention whenever I started my angle cut. I didn't have it lined up just right. Um, you know, I should have had it more this way. You can see I was going in on an edge, and I uh, just figured, you know, better safe than sorry. Get the skid litter and just finish it off. So now I'm going to chop this up, throw it on the burn pile, and uh, keep pushing forward. Okay, so one tree down and all cleaned up. I drug most of it over to the burn pile and put it on. Um, you know, there's some flames going in there. It's not burning crazy fast, which is kind of nice. I was a little worried that it was going to take off and, you know, kind of go on its own. So it's nice that it's staying contained. Um, I cut up a lot of a, a lot of the larger sections of the tree and uh, just kind of put it over there behind the grill. Uh, that way, whenever we come over here and just have little campfires and some or something, you know, we have start uh, a start of a stockpile of wood. So I don't know what it is uh, with me and forgetting gas, but I forgot to bring mixed gas for the chainsaw, and that is just about out. So this tree behind me is going to have to wait until probably next weekend. Um, I don't really want to rip out any more brush until I get these two big piles burnt down well pushed over there and burnt down as well as that third one I'm gonna actually cut in the entrance to our temporary driveway uh, I'm gonna try to get rid of most of this crushed up concrete I'm gonna pull the topsoil back uh, dig in and make a nice smooth entrance way uh, you know and I'll, I'll dig deeper than what I need so I can put that uh, crushed concrete down first put the dirt back over it, roll it in really nice, and then uh, I'll have to make a few trips up to the bench, er bench here and get a few buckets of my number three limestone that I have up there. Spread that, and then I'll use this little pile of 2B limestone to top it, and that should give us a nice access to drive up there.
Well, there it is. Uh, I got the temporary driveway cut in, dug out. I put in probably 12 to 14 ton of crushed concrete right in this area here. Um, I did that because that's going to compact really, really nice. Um, you know, I, it's not going to be sinking. Uh, I'm not going to lose it because there, it's just all shale and big rock underneath it. Um, what I had to do, though, was top it with probably six or seven inches of dirt because there's wire and uh, I did see one piece of rebar in it. So I wanted to make sure the wire didn't poke up get somebody's tire so I would say at the bare minimum there's probably seven to eight inches of dirt on top of that um, and again you know as you can see it's all you know big pieces of shale uh, big rock um, with some dirt obviously but that's going to compact on top of that and then I actually had a leak I think it's hydraulic uh, leak in the skid loader uh, I couldn't pinpoint it but I don't want to risk using it and breaking it uh, that would be a very very expensive fix so just you know hold off on doing any more work with that and fix it while it could potentially still be a cheaper fix um, but I did leave myself low enough that uh, as soon as I get that skid loader fixed I can come back bring those number three limestone cover this and then throw this little bit of 2b limestone right on top and uh, this will be really smooth to drive up okay so there it is I got a really large section of brush cleared out I got a tree cut down cut up and burnt the burn pile kind of died out um, you know I wasn't really tending to it I didn't really push it together just kind of sidetracked doing other stuff um, and then I got three piles of brush that I need to burn here some point in time but uh my parents sister uh soon to be brother-in-law rachel eleanor and sister-in-law and nephews came up we had a nice little pizza party so all in all it was a really good and really productive sunday so i'm happy with the progress i got done um considering i ran out of gas for the chainsaw and then i sprung an oil leak in our skid loader which is odd but Either way, uh, progress is progress, so we don't have our building permit, so I can't technically say we broke ground, but, you know, you got to clear all this brush out and everything before you can break ground. So it's, like I said, it's progress. So thank you guys very much for tuning in to another episode of Gunpowder and Freedom. If you liked what you saw, please click the like and subscribe, and be sure to check back for uh, more updates on uh, Project Build the House. So I don't know, we'll come up with a better name than that. So thanks, guys. We'll see you, go we'll see you on the next one.